uh, first I want to say thank you for this opportunity and I'm going to present today part of my work, my PhD research, and which is entitled The Influence of Magnesium Deficiency on Bone Remodeling Cells. So magnesium is the fourth most abundant cation and the most abundant cation intracellular invertebrates. Its primary functions include maintenance of muscles, nerves functions, normal cardiac rhythm, nucleotide synthesis, sodium potassium metabase activity, and bone strength. The total amount of magnesium in the human body is 25 grams. Of this total amount, 50 to 6 percent is stored in the bone. So the bone serves as a reservoir of magnesium that is going to maintain its physiological extracellular uh, concentrations. Um, it is estimated that from 2.5 to 15 percent of the world population suffers from some form of hypomagnesemia and uh, this kind of deficiency is more common in industrialized countries. Uh, we see that these countries, the, the uh, diet habits could uh, lead to this kind of deficiency. And also epidemiologic studies have demonstrated a positive correlation between dietary magnesium intake and bone density, which means that when you have an increased uh, rate of bone loss with low diet magnesium intake, and this could lead to osteoporosis. So the recommended daily allowance for magnesium is 420 milligrams per day for adult men and 320 milligrams per day for adult women. But this intake is a lot, uh, a lot less than this recommendation. Also, organic food have 29% more magnesium than non-organic food. And ingestion of certain substances such as alcohol, tea, sodas, and sugar also may cause excessive loss of magnesium. And uh, some medicines such as cyclosporine, antibiotics, and diuretics also increase this magnesium extraction. So we also see that this deficiency is more common in people with diabetes mellitus because there are some systemic diseases such as diabetes that results also in malabsorption of magnesium. So what happens to the body when you have magnesium deficiency? First, you're going to see an increase of pro-inflammatory cytokines, also increase of uh, inflammation cells, immuno uh, immunoinflammation cells, neutrophils, eosinophils, and macrophages, and also leukocytes. An impaired, impairment in action and secretion of PTH. A decreased number of osteoblasts, increased number of osteoclasts, and impairment in the mineralization process. So, all of these items together could lead to the imbalance on bone metabolism. So that's why magnesium leads to bone loss. So looking at all of these informations, our study wants to evaluate the effect of magnesium restriction on osteoclastogenesis, as we saw that we have uh, more numbers and activity of these osteoclasts. And, uh, we, by precursors obtained from marrow long, long bone and further influence on osteoclast activity. And we also made another study in vivo trying to evaluate the re relevant role of magnesium in the inflammatory process and bone metabolism together. So the in vitro studies, um, we did, we isolate bone marrow cells from mice from the long bone and we seeded these cells with uh, four different groups uh, with four different concentrations of magnesium. So 100%, 50%, 10%, and no magnesium on these cells. Um, these cells were also seeded on plastic and on bone. So by this way, we could see the activity of these cells. Uh, after three days of seeding, we evaluate PCR, uh, proliferation assay, as we don't have magnesium, so maybe we could have a, a, a 
alteration on this proliferation assay and the viability of the cells. And then after six days of uh, inducing the cells to become osteoclasts, so we wanted to see how many cells actually became osteoclasts. So this is, uh, we stain the cells for TRAP, which is uh, specific for osteoclast, so the purple color, and also for DAP, to, so we can account, count the number of nuclei because osteoclasts are multinucleated cells, okay? And also we made a TRAP enzymatic assay after six days. And then after eight days, we evaluate the resorption pitch. So if the cells were actually resorbing bone, how was the activity of the cells? So as a result, what we can see after these figures, so this is the control, 100% of magnesium, 50%, uh, 10%, and zero magnesium. Also in these figures, we can see that the, the osteoclasts are bigger. We have these long, you know, longer cells with more nuclei inside the cells. So as the same we can see in our graphs. So less magnesium that we have, the more bigger are the cells, the more number of nuclei we have inside the cells. And also with less magnesium, so from here like 0% of magnesium in the cells, we also have a bigger number of osteoclast-like cells. These are the cells that were seated on bone. So this is the same thing, but they were seated on bone. That's why you see the blue color here. So here are the osteoclasts, and again, you can see that the less uh, uh, magnesium you have, more cells you're going to have, and more bigger are the cells, containing more nucleates. So as we can see here, when they were sitting on bone, we have a higher uh, number on 10%, and not again on 0%. As magnesium and calcium are antagonists, we also wanted to check if the cells were using the calcium on the medium because we didn't change the amount of calcium inside our medium. And as you can see here, the concentration of magnesium didn't change in all of our studies. So this is plastic with no cells, Plast uh, cells seated on plastics, cells seated on bone, and cells uh, with no cells just on bone, and then cells seated on bone. So. As for magnesium, the, the cells are not, uh, the medium is not losing magnesium. And calcium also did not change with all of our studies. As the viabil viab viability result after three days, so we could also see that even when you have lower amounts of magnesium, the cells are all viable. What we saw that we, what we suggest is that the cells use the magnesium that they had before while it was inside the animal. So that's why they don't, they don't die. And also the proliferation assay. So now here we, we check the amount of DNA and we could see that from day zero to day three and six, all of the cells proliferate as with the same rate. rate. As a PCR uh, um, results, what we did here, we used the TRPM7, which is a, a marker for a magnesium transport inside the mitochondria, and also MRS2, which is also a magnesium transport inside the mitochondria. And what we could see here is we have uh, ex more expression in 10% of the magnesium deficiency. And also on cells when they were cultured on bone, we don't see this. Uh, the bone is making an interference on this uh, expression also. Here uh, is the other PCR uh, results, CMFS, RANK, and this is TAMP, CFOS. They're all osteoclast markers. And we see there's no difference, but there's a higher uh, expressions on the 
of magnesium concentration. So the cells are actually become more osteoclast. And also CFOS, TNF and I1 beta. Also you can see this higher expression on 10% after three days of culturing. So during this period, you have more expressions of this. As the resorption pitch assay, what we can see here is that even when you have a low uh, concentration of magnesium, there is no difference on the activity. But when you put together the total number of cells, of osteoclast-like cells, with the activity together, that's what we see here, we can see that we have a bigger number of cells, but they are less active than when you have magnesium deficiency. In the TRAP assay, also again, when we are checking the activity of the cells, we could see that they are less active in the uh, magnesium deficiency medium. And when you put the number of the cells again with the TRAP activity, is also again less active, which goes the opposite way with all the articles that we saw. But these, we have to also remember that these are, are cell cultures, so we have just specific cells in this medium, which is different when you look at the animal, when you have a lot of uh, interferations in the body. So as a conclusion of this first um, research, we could conclude that magnesium deficiency promote osteoclastogenics, uh, also, magnesium deficiency did not interfere on the viability of the cells and the proliferation rate of the precursor cells. And during the magnesium deficiency, the number of osteoclasts is higher, but they are less active. So we go to the second uh, research in vivo now with animals with bread. And in, on this second research, we wanted to evaluate the relevant role played by magnesium in the affirmatory process and on bone metabolism also. So just uh, for the record, uh, for you to know what we did was to induce periodontal disease in these animals so we can see the inflammatory, we can induce an inflammatory disease and see what happens when these animals has this magnesium deficiency. So the periodontal disease is a multi-factor inflammatory disease initiated and maintained by microorganisms of the dental biofilm, which affects the supporting structures of the teeth and could lead to lose the teeth. In spite of its infections, nature, behavioral, genetic, and host-related factors ultimately determine the severity, susceptibility, and progression of the disease. And this is disease is uh, more common in industrialized countries, where it is estimated that 30 to 50 percent of the adult population suffers from some form of this periodontal disease. So what we did, our study design here, we used uh, 30 rats. So 15 of them were at the control group that received a standard magnesium content um, uh, uh, diet. And also the magnesium deficiency cells where we, we reduced to 90%, so we have just 10% of the recommended magnesium uh, on this diet. So here is our diet for the animals, and here's where we change the amount of magnesium. So here. The, the normal amount is 24, and we change it for 2.4. So what we did, uh, we divided two groups. So we started. Uh, the control group and magnesium group that was receiving the diet with reduction of magnesium. After 60 days of the diet, because we need these 60 days, so we wanted to be sure that the animal had this deficiency in, inside the body. And after these days, we placed the ligature on the lower first molar, of, uh, on the lower left first molar of the animal. 
In the lower right, first molar of the animal, we didn't do anything, so we used that as a control, okay? And after 30 days of using the ligature, we sacrificed the animal, and then we did serum levels from magnesium, calcium, micro CT in lumbar vertebra and the mandible, and immunohistochemistry we analyzed. So here uh, we just wanted to make sure that the animals were at the same weight because what we saw in another studies that the when you have a magnesium deficiency the animals uh, can lose weight but that didn't happen here so they're all the same weight. Uh, the serious levels also showed that there was a decrease in the amount of magnesium on the magnesium group and then on the deficiency group, which shows that they have this deficiency in the body, and the amount of culture did not change. So as a result of the micro CT, we can already see here, this is the control group that we didn't put the ligature. Uh, so the bone is okay, every, the trabecula and everything. And this is the control group for the magnesium. You can see that the trabecula is a little bit uh, more, um, there's more trabecular space. During the uh, periodontal disease, so you have this loss of bone because of the inflammation also. So this is the control group that was receiving the normal diet of magnesium. And this is the group with magnesium deficiency, but already you can see that there's more loss of bone in this teeth. So this is what we see in the graph. For bone mineral density, when you see the control side, there's no difference between them. When you see, oh, sorry. The disease side, periodontal disease side, also no difference between them. But when you compare both of them, you can see that it, you lose more bone, which is normal for periodontal disease. The bone vol volume fraction, also again, the magnesium didn't interfere on this loss of bone, only the disease. But when you see the trabe trabecular number and also the thickness of the trabecular, we can see that there is a difference between um, control group and the magnesium deficiency group, even when you have the health side and periodontal disease side, like here also. And the trabecular separation as well, we can also see a difference only between uh, the health side and periodontal side. So to see what is going on also in, uh, in the body, we used to see if these mice could have osteoporosis. So we also checked the lumbar vertebra of these mice. And what we could see is that for bone mineral density, we have on magnesium deficiency uh, group, there is a decrease, also a decrease on bone volume, volume fraction, sorry and also a decrease on trabecular number and increase on trabecular separation. So the mice is actually losing bone because of the magnesium deficiency. And it's more clear, this loss of bone when you have inflammations together, that's what we saw before in periodontal disease. For immunohistochemistry, we are still working in this research. So I, for here, I just have uh, osteoblast specific markers and what we could see here is that there was no change when you have uh, the health side or periodontal disease side for ranks 2 but you could see a change on periodontal disease side when you have osteocalcin which is a osteoblastic marker so you have less osteoblast osteoblastic cells in this group but the magnesium deficiency by itself could not change, did not interfere on this result. So as a conclusion, we could see that magnesium deficiency increases the severity of alveolar bone loss induced by experimental periodontal disease. 
suggesting that magnesium plays a role not only on bone homeostasis but also in the modulation of bone turnover associated with immune inflammatory process. Thank you very much. This is what I have to present and I want to thank you all the people that helped me during this research. <laughs>